the panel was actually an interesting one. It was about kind of multi-screen, in a multi-screen untethered world. And I, it, it's kind of difficult to get your head around, but it, um, it, in the end, um, it, this whole argument about first screen, second screen, third screen, uh, from my perspective is, is, a, is a little odd in that it ought not to be my job to decide what's first and second screen. I think it's going to be different for different people during different times of their day, different times of their life, different times of their uh, any, anything. And so the whole idea of deciding which is first and second screen, I think from my point of view, uh, the most important issue is the content. So if you are producing differentiated, distinct and compelling content, then whatever screen you deliver it on, you, you're going to win the game. We, we, took a, we took a decision uh, about six months ago that our breaking news emails uh, were essentially a uh, headline. And that means that it's, you have to click on it to then go to the web to get the full story. And we thought, well, someone's paid $329 for a subscription. Why the hell should they have to, especially if you're on a device like a BlackBerry, why the hell would you want to click to have a web experience on the BlackBerry? On a tablet device or even an iPhone, it's kind of okay, but on a BlackBerry, it really sucks. So we said, fine, if you have a BlackBerry or you have a phone device and you receive breaking news alert and you are a subscriber, you get the whole story. That way you don't have to go to the website, it's your choice. It's the same content, but it's very, it's very slightly altered for the medium. So for example, our journalists are going back to first basics and they're putting the front paragraph rather more heavily loaded, which of course everybody was taught at journalist school. First paragraph, if you don't get all the information, you should start again probably. I think what we're missing in this discussion is the, the unavoidable truth that what this is is simply fragmentation. The population in North America is around 360 million, I think. It's, it's, it's gone up through immigration over the last 20 years, marginally. Europe is basically static, so there are no more people, but the ways you can receive information is very heavily fragmented. And I think it's a really nice idea to think that if you do something on an iPhone with current content, you can have an upcharge. Well, you know, the publishing and the music business went through that kind of brain fart as well, and it doesn't work because actually your core business declines at such a rate that the new business doesn't, doesn't make up for it. And interesting, I, I'm not going to claim this, I think it was Jim Giannopoulos who runs Fox, who said what we're doing is we're exchanging analogue dollars for digital dimes. And I thought that was a, a really, really neat phrase. Variety three years ago, we just said, look, okay, let's, let's figure a few things out. Let's actually model this, because this is just math. You know, we know what's going, we have Halvarian's law of pricing, which says in an unregulated market, price will always gravitate to the marginal cost of distribution. Well, guess what? The internet is the ultimate in unregulated markets, and it's the ultimate in zero cost of marginal cost of distribution. So like, we know something's going to happen, and that means that price is going to do that. So we said, now's not the time to do a few little things. Now's the time to be decisive and you know, have confidence. Do what your basic instinct tells you, that if you produce high quality content, you have to believe someone will be prepared to pay for it. Interestingly, since the tablet device came out, Variety subscriptions, subscriptions have gone up nearly 6,000 in just under a year. And that's the first material gain in circulation numbers in a declining size industry that we've experienced in 10 years. I think we've realized that we've tethered the business model and we said, okay, you pay one subscription, you can have it however you choose. And when you do that, that is very enabling as a, for us as content producers. We don't care how you get it or where you get it as long as you pay. If you don't pay, you don't get it at all. I think don't get wound up in the technology. I mean, I heard a panel before me and there was lots of stuff about megabytes and will the cloud hold it, will it support it? I mean, almost all of that is irrelevant. I remember people saying that about internet consumption, like, oh yeah, but bandwidth's a major restriction. And someone said to me recently, oh yeah, well bandwidth, you know, it limits the download of a... Christ, if you've stuck a DVD in a Blu-ray player, you wait three minutes for the damn thing to reboot because it's such an appalling software suite. So uh, those things will all change. It's not about the technology. It's in the end about what people want to consume, what they emotionally engage with. And that, that I would say, is well, it doesn't matter whether it's a mobile device or whether it's a, a laptop computer or whether it's a newspaper. The content is the thing. And Hold on to your IP and don't give it away cheap.